Hey guys, what's up? Liru the Lance Corporal here, and I've got some really exciting news. Um, so I've been doing Luton 09's missions every Friday, being on the grounds for the past few months, and he's given me an offer now to, instead of being on his missions since he's gotten so popular, I can host missions alongside him to take his extras as well as host anyone who wants to take a break from Luton's mission. So I've been spending the past 48 hours since I got this news um, figuring out, you know, how I want to do my daily public Zeus missions. And I've um, this video, which is going to be titled The Introduction to Liru's Ground War, <laughs> uh, is going to cover what we're going to be seeing for these types of Friday missions. Uh, it's five simple things, um, unit structure, weapon restrictions, uh, how I'm going to balance the missions, how I'm going to balance uh, briefings, uh, equipment you're going to get, reinsertions, mortars, you name it, everything's going to be covered in this video. So first thing I want to cover is the amount of units I'm going to have. There's going to be three 10-man teams. One of them is an example here. Um, so that's for Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Then you're going to have a recon element that also serves as the command group, which will be dubbed Delta. And then you're going to have Echo, which is going to be a sniper team for the sake of the overall commander who's going to be in Delta to task whatever he wants with. And then you're going to have your pilots, which I'm going to have four slots for. So one per um, large squad and one for the recon team and the sniper team. So let's look at the overall structure of these teams. You're going to have your squad leader. On his right, you're going to have two medics, one here and one here, an auto rifleman, and a grenadier. And on your left, you're going to have a sharpshooter, or marksman, probably keep him as a marksman actually. You're gonna have a heavy gunner for heavy suppressive fire. You're going to have a fire team leader for the uh, either the grenade launcher will be a second grenadier, or if the squad lead wants some additional help, uh, like a team red, team blue, he'll take team red. Squ uh, fire team leader will take team blue. You know, some more organization. You're going to have a missile specialist with a titan. That's very important. And you're going to have an engineer who's going to act more like a rifleman role, but you know, engineer equipment can be used for disarming explosives or uh, planting explosives, you know, he'll be the utility role uh, if there's any vehicle involvements or explosive involvements uh, with his toolkit, which will be very important. Now we're going to go over to the recon team, Delta. You're going to have the overall commander of the mission. On his right, you're going to have the UAV operator and a recon AT guy. You're going to have the squad, uh, the fire team leader for the recon team, so the recon team leader. And you're also going to have a recon paramedic. Echo team, very simple. Sniper, spotter, that's self-explanatory. And then your four pilots. So one pilot will get in the little bird, fly the seven people for Delta and Echo to be tasked wherever, and then... One pilot will either fly a Ghost Talker or a Chino can take one or two squads to somewhere. It depends on what the commander wants and what's allowed in the mission. Some item restrictions. Uh, for the first week or two, we're going to roll with Luton's standard uh, restrictions, which is uh, no thermals. Stamina is going to be on. There's going to be uh, it's five, five, six weaponry only for the main squads. I'm going to make some changes to that because, let's be honest, you're a military unit. You're NATO. NATO doesn't run, NATO won't run 5.56 five, in the future when they have access to 6.5 weaponry of higher caliber and that are deadlier, especially when you're facing units like CSAT, which are going to be heavily armored and take four to five shots to kill in the chest, which is an absolute pain in the ass if you're playing that uh, type of mission. So we're going to upgrade the weaponry to standard 6.5. The heavy gunner will get an Navid 9.3, and your AT guy, he's not going to be limited to some, like, RPG or PCML. No, we're going to give him a freaking Titan with lock-on, because, let's be honest, you're a modern military, for fuck's sake. 
Recon team, again, 6.5. You're always, and this is, this will excite a few people. UAV operator is always going to be allowed, and it's always going to have a UAV, all right? Recon is very important for these missions, especially if you want to be cautious, prepared, and you want to be able to scout everything out, because you will be facing larger forces against you, and we'll talk about that ratio later in this video, but it's very important that you have multiple angles to recon from. Very simple. Uh, stamina, we're going to keep that on just for the sake of the AT specialist. They're not going to be able to carry a Bergen with six missiles. There's no point. You'll be able... I will never make an AO where there's like eight vehicles and you have to rely on AT missile drops. Maybe for a defense where the pilots are bringing back and forth uh, reinforcements and ammo and vehicles, but for a standard go over there and kill everything or get this objective done, it's you're not going to really need that much AT. The AT is more so for the squad. If they encounter a vehicle, they need to destroy it. Nice little highlight reel. Uh, recon guy, though, I'm going to keep him with a PCML, because, again, recon, not really a combat role. Um, just, it, it's that simple. <laughs> um, I'm also going to limit no suppressors for the main three squads. I know that sucks, but again, that's left for the recon team. I gotta make a few restrictions here and there. However, um, since recon, you know, they're not going to be that well armored, etc. Because they're a recon team, and again, you're a modern military, these five guys are going to get thermal. And that's a very bold decision on my end, and I'm hoping they don't abuse it too much. But as a recon team, they need to know what the hell is going on and gather as much information as possible. Because these guys are going to be the first boots on the ground with the sniper team. And so with Thermal, they can gather as much information as they can. I will definitely counter that with putting units in more, like, concealed areas, maybe a few vipers, throw them off guard. But, again, these missions are for your enjoyment. So if you, the more information you have going into the AO, the better it's going to play out. I've been Zeusing for years, and it's there's a trend with that information. Uh, Echo is not going to get thermal, so just imagine this guy, like, one of your crazy, crazy snipers... Um, they, I can name a few names, but if he has thermals with this, there's no point in anyone else playing, let's be honest. And so, one last restriction. The um, armor you spawn with, the helmets, um, that's going to be permanent. You can't change it. Uh, for the sake of, I don't want recon guys wearing, like, primary battle gear uh, plate armor because they need to be mobile. They're recon. They... I'm trying to encourage them to scout out the AO, but not necessarily take anything out. The only exception is if there's a needed vehicle to be taken out, they'll have the ability to with the PCML, but they're going to have to get a little close for comfort. Risk versus reward. However, you know, these guys will have, you know, the chest plate gear, depending on the role and what you are. Um, it'll be balanced for the stamina system. Like, you know, some guys have full chest plate. While the grenadiers, they'll have, you know, the light rigs, but for the weight of, uh, not just the grenadiers, I'm sorry, but the... Uh, Auto riflemen, you know, they'll have light rigs so they can carry more ammo, etc., etc. So that covers general uh, unit layouts and some restrictions. Um, there will be more specific restrictions for some missions, which I'm going to get into part two. Um, I want to spend about 20 to 30 minutes designing the mission, but then when I'm done, I really do want to have a briefing like this where I will be down somewhere, I'll announce that, all right, guys, let's start the mission. Can I have the overall commander, the recon squad uh, team lead, and the three, uh, command, uh, three squad leads? And we're going to discuss the operation. So for any AO, it's absolutely imperative that you know everything that I deem is necessary for you to know. And this includes things such as any special vehicles I want to give you or equipment support, such as mortars, or if I want to give the pilots any close air support of any type or different vehicles. 
This will all be covered in this five to 10 minute briefing. It is also a time where any one of the leader roles can ask me any questions that I will answer imperatively because I need to make sure you guys understand what I expect from you in this mission and I need you guys to understand what equipment and uh, support you'll be given as well as you know any objectives that I want you to do. I wanna be absolutely clear for the squad leads so then they can return to their squads and say, okay, we're doing this, this, and this. Here's the objective, here's what we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. Very simple. Process should take no more than 30 minutes and then we can get on with the mission. Uh, I'm going to try to build missions where they'll have multiple parts so we can do a smooth transition into the next part and that'll be, we, uh, that'll be what we do every week. Very simple, very straightforward. I want to get you guys on the field ASAP and there is no reason after individual squads are pre uh, prepped and briefed, there's no reason you guys shouldn't be out in the field within 40, 45 minutes. And I'm going to start building these earlier than the 6 o'clock start time. So in actuality, you should be out playing the mission within 30 minutes. I know Luton likes to take up to two and a half hours. Honestly, as a college student with not that much time, two and a half hours of standing around the base doing jack shit isn't really a really effective use of my time. So again, I'm thinking about you guys. I want to make sure everything's prepped and ready to go. So that's number two. Now let's go over to number three. So this is a bit of a rough diagram of, you know, all of the player units right here. You know, it looks like a lot when you put them all together as well as the pilots. And then I want to show you just, you know, a simple layout of what you'll be fighting like this scattered around at the AO. Notice there's significantly more enemy troops, but not by much. I mean, it's about double to triple. If you were to take a Luton mission, this number would be a little bigger, if not a lot. There would be a lot more statics, a lot more vehicles, and a lot more mortars, which, again, pain in the ass. Least is most. So, you know, you'll have, like, in a large AO, let's say this island, you know, uh, I'm, fuck this mountain. You'll have maybe three of those uh, six CSAT squads I showed you, three maybe garrison and three moving around. That's not a lot. That's um, eight times six. That's about, uh, God, I can't math right now, but 48, 96, you know, about 100 enemy troops. for So for like, you know, 40 so guys, that's, you know, two to three guys per uh, player, which, you know, is not a bad ratio. Yes, I'll throw in a few vehicles for the AT guys to take out, but again, these should be more so priority targets for the squads to deal with. And then, of course, have to have mortars. Well, I'll talk about these in a second. Don't, don't be scared if you've seen some of my recent missions where Luton literally kills all the player base with the mortar. I know. I'm not going to do that. I'll get into more of that later, but these will just be more so for a deterrent. So, you know, standard AO, when you look at that, honestly, when you're playing for maybe an hour to two hours on a mission, this isn't that much. This should only take about an hour in a specific AO. Vehicles are probably going to go down first, followed by the in most of the infantry. You'll get the objective done easy. Now, let's talk about some balancing at least in my mind, what I know works well. So there's literally five different like groups of enemies you could really fight. The first, the FIA. Poorly armed with 556 five, weaponry and practically no armor. If you shoot them once with a 6.5, they're going to die, unless it's in the arm. So honestly, you can put a lot of these guys down and I like to think of their ratio as four to five of them per player. Yes, I'll have to balance it for uh, size. You know, this is going to be more so. There's going to be a lot of shit going on on the ground, but they're easy as hell to kill. If you've got about 40 units on the ground, you could be facing about, mm, I want to say, up to 200 enemies, which sounds like a lot, but trust me, I won't have them all at once in the map. That would cause way too much lag. More so, you'd be fighting maybe 
this large amount with a few technicals or transports and then as the AO is progressing I would stay in the I would state in the mission that you know enemy reinforcements are going to be coming in in the form of convoys patrols blah 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 because FIA missions are more so you're fighting somewhere where there's guerrilla activity so um, not really urban areas but you know more like the Freniri woods or uh, I forget uh, ghost hotel you know uh, areas where in the swamps too you know where there's they're gonna know the layout of the land more so and um, that's where you'll fight them next level of guys uh, syndicate forces either paramilitary or bandits um, I like to keep this ratio as one NATO player to three to four more so the four upscale so about a hundred and fifty enemy units on the ground which again sounds like a lot but there's gonna be like 40 of you running around so not that bad um, it won't always be up to that number more so like 120 to 150 but no armor they're gonna die easily the only real threat is the 7.62 weaponry and the AKU which is also packs a pretty nasty punch but um, you know decent ratio easy to mow down for these guys in the squad especially you have the elements of surprise or in good cover just keep your medics back and you should be fine so these are the two you know more like non-militarized factions easier to kill now we get into the militaries where i like to keep the ratio of for aaf for csat one to two to three uh units so more so 40 versus i want to say between 95 and 120 you know the two to three ratio uh just somewhere in there it depends on the mission i'm also counting in reinforcements i throw in in the form of one or two aries unarmed choppers which you can you know shoot down with the heavy gunner or the at specialist can get lucky very simple you know i want to keep it balanced but you know give enough for everyone to shoot at and, you know, these guys aren't all going to be together. They're going to be separated. You figure it out. <laughs> and then, if I ever feel like being an asshole, it's one to one to two. I'm not even going to talk about it. You see them. You see it. Those will be the fun surprises. But if you ever see Viper Base, you can expect I'm also going to give you some, uh, probably some close air support, because these guys are assholes. So that covers basic unit deployment. Um, again, I want to make it better for a ratio of you guys to the enemy. I don't want to make it too ridiculous. I remember there's there's plenty of missions I've played where you fight like an initial 100, and then there's going to be another 100 put down, and then another 50 in reinforcement. That's too much. Jesus Christ, that's too much. Anyway, very simple. I want to keep this for the players. Now, let's get into artillery. Yeah, yeah, artillery. I know, we all gotta talk about it. Now, there will be some Zeuses that tell you artillery can be used as a deterrent to players to get them to do what they do, but to always keep them on their toes. I'm gonna say this. Artillery is a great atmospheric weapon. If you want to, you know, push a unit to go forward if they're hanging out in an area too long artillery is a great way to let your players know they need to start going not it's not a weapon to put on a large group of infantry together just to fuck with them holy crap that it pisses me off when i see that it's just so painful like my asses, which I'm trying to fix, but regardless, here's how I'm going to do artillery. It's very simple. If you guys are hold, held up in one area for a very long period of time, it'll be judged on a case-by-case -case basis, but if it's not representative to the mission, you're just dicking around, or your squad leader's being too cautious, what's going to happen is if and only if there is a spotter he won't be concealed like this. This is just for atmospheric purposes. He'll be, you know, a standard infantry guy running around. I will give him a direct order to sit tight, look at where the enemies are. It'll be about, you know, 20 seconds to coordinate between them and the radio guys. 
for the artillery. And then they will fire a smoke round. Smoke. Close to where the group is staying. So on the road, behind them, around. And then from there, there's going to be about 30 seconds. And then a single ranging mortar shot will go close to the smoke. And if you guys still aren't moving, then it's Hail Mary. But generally, after one single ranging shot that's not meant to kill anyone, more for atmospheric purposes, you guys got to start moving. If the spotter dies, no more artillery. If you knock out the radio guy, no more artillery until another guy is moved to the radio guy's place. And it will be taken, it won't be spawned, and it'll be an individual guy taken from a garrison or something. If you kill the guys on artillery, no more artillery until they replace them again with guys from the AO. And if you blow, break the artillery or blow it up, no more artillery for the mission. I'm going to do my best to keep the artillery in the AO. I know there's some Zeus's that like to make artillery bases outside of the AO so they can always use it. Again, I think that's stupid. But, you know, just a single thing to worry about. Like, this is the recon team's target for uh, the Echo Sniper team to take out. This is the biggest priority. Because if they don't, shit's going to happen. It's meant for atmospheric purposes as well. So if you start taking a barrage of artillery, know that it's not me trying to kill you. It's me adding some atmosphere for, like, highlight footage or for you guys. Like, if, you know, there was just a crazy firefight, I'm going to probably artillery the, like, you know, the ridge line or the cover line behind you guys because, you know, that's the enemy reacting. That's them, you know, shitting their pants saying, oh, shit, NATO's coming. Let's, you know, try to kill him. But again, this is for your enjoyment. Not my stream's enjoyment. Not my enjoyment, though I always get enjoyment out of hosting for people. This is for the player's enjoyment. Because if I artillery you all, are you going to come back? No. No, you're not. <laughs> so, that's artillery in a nutshell. Kill the spotter, kill the radio guy, kill the guys operating it, blow up the artillery. Very easy to take it all out. And it's not going to be hidden in some stupid little place. It'll be in a little enclosure, which... If anything, we'll make it easier to find. Now, the last thing, number five, I want to talk about is respawns. And, you know, I recently heard of this rule, and I actually kind of like it. For the sake of, if you have, you know, a single guy die, and, you know, there's one or two chopper pilots who in respawns, they're not going to, like, take this single guy and move him with the chopper. That's a huge waste of resources. I'd rather want... A small fire team of reinsertions to go on the reinsertion chopper and then land and then redeploy with their squads or whatever so very simple rule if you die and you aren't revived which again there's gonna be seven medics in the AO so if none of them can get to you well that might be an error on my end that it's too difficult or commands doing something stupid regardless it needs to be four or more players till the uh, till respawn can be respawns can be moved back to the AO. You know, a bit of immersion purposes, a bit of you know realistic purposes. Don't waste fuel on just a single guy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very simple, very straightforward. So that that's pretty much it. Again, these are going to be done on Fridays, same time as Luton stream, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard, or I believe 23 to 0300 British Standard Time on Fridays. I'm going to get more into streaming as well, but um, for now, you know, this is all we got. <laughs> so, uh, one last thing I want to cover. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please bring them to my attention. I know there are some Zeus's that like to have a debrief. I would love to do a debrief with you guys. Um, and these same Zeus's don't like just defend their actions or shit. No, I want to hear what you guys think that would make the AO better. Because that makes me a better Zeus. And that makes the missions in the future much more enjoyable for everyone. Um, and, you know, everything's not set in stone. I'll always change up how missions are done. But you can expect that this video, its template, is going to stay consistent. And if it doesn't, please let me know. Please reference this and point me out for being an asshole. And, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Trust me, I've, 
it's happened to me many, many times. You know, I get too stupid with the artillery or I accidentally spawn too much for, you know, a group of more new players to handle. I take everything into account as much as I can, but even I will make mistakes. However, I will point out if the error is on a squad's uh, perspective or the commander's perspective, um, if you guys do something absolutely stupid, I will definitely point that out in the debriefing and say, no, you should have done it this, this, and this. But um, if that's done consistently, I will definitely change out how I host stuff. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, this will be done every Friday, and if it isn't, I'm going to get really mad at Luton and Shadow. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're going to make this a thing. So um, this will be a Twitch exclusive as well for live streaming, but I am going to port them over to YouTube because apparently Twitch will only archive the video for 14 days, and that's that's not good for someone trying to make content for everyone to watch, you know. So I'll figure all that out, and, you know, I will see you guys this Friday. So... Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Operate operationally.